had nothing to do. That is why the Bible said the gifts of God are irrevocable. What God has given to you, God can never take it back. God wants you to prosper with what he has given to you because what God has given to you is to bless you so that your life will be better. God cannot take what he has given to you from us. But look at that man who did not make use of what God has given to him. The, the master says, collect from him what he had and give to the other man. Why? The ability he has been given, he wasted it. Amen. So take stock in your life. I know where you are. Are you making use of God's talents, God's ability? Are we just coming to church and we think we are doing well? No. The rich, the rich young ruler thought he was doing very well. He thought he knew, he, he knew it all. And God said, Jesus, okay, go and say what you had. We have never gotten there yet. Amen. The Bible said, this is one thing I do. I do not count myself to have apprehended. He said, one thing I do, I leave what is behind me. Amen? And then go after what is before me. Pursue what is before you. Because none of us has arrived yet until we stand before God in heaven. That's when you can arrive. Before I close, one man of God said this. That's great for dollar. I said this. He said there are three things that would be so surprising to so many people. He said when you get to heaven, those people that you expect they will be there, you'll be so surprised they are not there. That's if you ever make it to heaven. <laughs> that, that's what he says. That's if you yourself will ever make it to heaven. Listen to this. Very powerful. He says you'll be so surprised that people that you have expected, you get there, you don't see them. And you'll be so surprised that those people that they were cleaning toilets, you never saw them in the you never saw them on TV. You see them in heaven. You say, Wow. And you know the third surprise is that you are able to make it. Shall we stand on our feet? Amen. Our greatest desire is for you to make heaven. Listen to me. You see, when I'm standing here, my greatest desire is for you to make heaven. Anybody that stands here to preach, what we are called to do is to make sure we carry people back to heaven. Amen. That's what we are committed to do. And that's what we have been trained to do. That's what we have been called to do. Now, before we pray, Brother Steve, can you give me um, Acts chapter 20 from verse 34. We want to pray prayer there. Amen. But I want us to understand something there too because God is a God. The Bible says God remains the same. It's not a God of favoritism. Who favors A and will not favor B. No. A is an impartial God. Amen. Now, ye, ye yourself know what these hands have done as ministered unto my necessity. This was Paul. Unto them that were with me. Please, next. He said, I have showed you all things. That's what we are doing. He said, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Next. He says, and when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and he prayed with them. Next. No, I think. Uh, go to 35. Let me see. Because there is a place too that God gave, I mean, Paul gave a clean slate. Because we want to understand that we in the New Testament, you will say, well, that's Old Testament. <laughs> let me, let's see New Testament too. Paul actually left a clean slate before he left all those places he was planting churches. He left a clean slate. He says, Acts 
33. Yes, you're right. Amen. Now, let's start from 32. He said, and now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build, to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified. It says, I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Paul has gone and has planted all the churches. Amen. Paul was about to move into a new season. Paul was about to go to Rome. And you know if you are a student of the Bible, Rome was the peak of Paul's ministry. Most of the writing we find here, he wrote them in Rome. That's why of all the places that Paul planted churches, we still have a church in Rome. Hello? Amen. So Paul was leaving those elders. He went and planted churches. But the Bible says he also balanced his books. He balanced his account. Because he never wanted anybody to accuse him. Because he went there, he served, and he was about to leave. He said, let me ask you, have I converted anything from anybody? Have I taken your wife? Have I taken your goat? Have I stolen from you? He says, check me out. And they said, no. They did not have anything on Paul. Jesus Christ said, let any of you accuse me of any sin that I have committed for 33 and a half years on the planet Earth. Jesus Christ did not commit any sin. Is that possible? Is that possible? For him and for us too. Amen. So we want to pray. And our prayer is this. Lord, thank you. I'm not going to pray. When we go down, the Bible says, Paul knelt down and prayed with them, not for them. 